Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be a continuation of our series on Access SQL or SQL. More specifically, today we're going to be talking about aggregate functions. Now aggregate functions are calculations that we can do in our queries to kind of tease out some of the more pertinent information and give us actual values that we might use in our application. And rather than doing those calculations in our programming, like VBA, uh, or on our form, we can do them in the query to help give us a little bit of better performance on the results. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop out and take a look at what we've got in our database. Now, the first thing is I've created this table called Table 1 Inventory. And do not use this as the basis for your own inventory table. Trust me. There's a lot more complexity to what you will have in your own application. For example, a uh, vendor. I've got just a, the name of a vendor here. In, a, in the real world, what you should have is a much more normalized process where a vendor table exists. And then maybe your inventory table refers to the vendor ID with a, as a foreign key. Um, I've got quantity in and quantity out, which is how many of each particular item. You've probably got purchase orders and invoices and sales orders, etc. So you're really not going to want to really kind of track all of this in a single table like the way I'm doing it here. But for our purposes, for example, for you know, for demonstration purposes here, this is a good start here. I've got a vendor, a part name, a part description, quantity in, which is how many of that particular part have we received quantity out which is how many parts uh, how many of that particular part we've sold the cost each is how much it has cost the company each uh, you know each one of these so we've got a hundred of them at four dollars and ninety nine cents each and then we've got a price each which is how much we are going to charge the customer for each one of those items okay and for those of you curious about how we would figure out how much is on hand from a table like this well on hand is simply 100 minus 33, which is going to be 67. Okay, so that's good enough for that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new query through the Query Designer. And I'm going to grab Table 1 Inventory. And I'm going to drop in the Vendor field as a column for my query. And let's go ahead and view that. And you'll see Vendor 1 comes up twice. And that's as it should be, because we've got vendor1 listed twice in our table. And just also to point out, widgets come from both vendor1 and vendor2. But we've got two different parts that come from vendor1. We've got a widget and we've got a what's it. Okay? And a widget and a what's it have two different prices as well. But the widget that we purchase from vendor2 has a different cost, but we sell it at the same price. Uh, to our customers as what we sell the one that we get from vendor one. This is a pretty common practice of what you would find out in the real world. You will find uh, that you do maybe purchase the same part from two different vendors and it's going to be at a cost to you, that, uh, uh, some sort of difference of cost. Okay, so let's go back to our query here and let's say that you've been tasked with trying to find out um, all of the vendors that you have purchased a part from. Now if we just gave them this table, this query that gives vendor one twice, well that's not very useful information because you're getting duplicate vendors showing up over and over and over again. So you might not have a very accurate count. Notice I've got four records here, okay? Well that's not really accurate because I'm receiving different parts from the same vendor. So really I've got three vendors here, not four. And what you can do is you can go in here and you can click on the totals button. And when you do that, you're going to see the total row show up here and it says group by. And what's going on here is that now it's going to group all of the vendors together that have the same name. So if vendor one, the two rows that have vendor one will be lumped into one single row. And when we click view, you can see that. Vendor 1 only shows up once now, and now we only have three records, okay? So that's what grouping by does. It groups 
um, like values together into one row. If we look at the actual SQL language in the background here, we can see that Access has added this group by clause and it has grabbed the table one inventory dot vendor and added it to the group by clause. So you can see we still have our select statement, we still have our from statement, it's just added this group by and put the table one inventory dot vendor in it. So it's saying we're grab all these values, but then I want you to group according to the vendors. Okay? So that's how that works. That's the what it actually looks like in the background. Now let's say that you've also been tasked with not only that, not only finding out how many, uh, you know, what what the um, what each vendor is that you've purchased apart from, but let's say that now boss wants to find out, okay, what is the maximum cost per item that we would receive on one particular item. So what is the maximum, you know, what's the highest dollar amount that we would pay per item on any particular given item? And obviously with our cost each is the field that we're going to be looking for that, okay? Because we're wanting to look at each cost, at the cost of each item, and then we're going to try to find the highest value from that particular vendor. Now, as it stands, when I just drop this cost each in here, you can see it threw in another group by. And if we look at the SQL view back behind here, you can see it's once again added cost each to both the select statement and our group by statement. And if we actually view this, we get vendor one showing up again. And I've seen lots of people get frustrated with this because they think that they're doing the right thing. Um, in how they're doing their grouping and how they're doing their aggregates and they'll get this type of result and they're like, ah, why do I keep getting the same vendor? Well, essentially what's going on here is that vendor and cost both have to be the same in order for it to show up as one item, uh, as one row. Because if you look here, vendor one shows up twice, but cost each has two different values for vendor one and that's why it shows up as two different rows so when you're doing the group by you need to understand oops that's not what i wanted to do i want to go back here when you're doing the group by you need to understand that both of these values must be identical in order for it to show up as one single row and that's even if uh you know if i had a third item in here that had vendor one and the and the cost was six dollars and ninety nine cents then I would have the same problem, okay? So, that is what group by does. You, you will get, for anything that might be unique in either a vendor or a cost each, will cause a new row to show up in your results. Okay, now the goal of this was to find out what the maximum cost was. So we can see vendor one has two items, one of them for a dollar, uh, for $4.99 and one of them, it, we purchase for $5.99. And the goal was to find out what the maximum cost was that we got from each particular vendor. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go back into the design view and I'm going to change this particular group by for the cost each to max. But I'm going to do it actually in the SQL code. Okay? And if I do this, I'm going to do max and I'm going to put cost each in parentheses with the max function name uh, preceding the parentheses. Now when I do this, when you're doing a calculation on a field, you need to alias out the result, the, the resulting field. And ideally you should not name it the same as what you are doing the calculation on. You want to make a unique alias name. So I'm going to do max of cost each. Okay. So now, what's happening here is we are doing, we're going to group, or we're, we're getting the vendors, we're going to do a, we're going to get the, the highest value, the maximum of a cost for that particular vendor, and we're going to result, that one single result is going to show up as max of cost each, okay? And we're grouping by vendor, and we're grouping by cost each, and when I run this, 
uh-oh, we've got a problem. And that's because I've got a syntactical error. If I look back at this again, there is one thing that I need to do in order to make this calculation work. And that is I need to drop it from the group by statement. Because no longer am I trying to group by it, I'm trying to actually do a calculation on it. I should get one result, I'm not grouping by the result. Okay? And when I do that, now I get the results I want. Now I've got a $5.99 for vendor one instead of the two separate, uh, separate costs. Okay, so whenever you are designing, whenever you're doing an aggregate in your queries, you need to make sure anything that is having a calculation done on it is being done in the select statement. You're wrapping your field in parentheses and you're doing that particular function, which in this case is a max function, and you're aliasing that field to be something else, to be named something other than what the field is that you're doing the calculation on. And that calculated field should not be in your group by statement. Okay, you no longer need to do any grouping because a function is only going to return one result anyway. So why would you need to group by it? It's just got a single result. Okay, but anything that does not have a calculation done on it, such as like the vendor field, you need to either be doing a calculation on it or it needs to be in the group by clause. If I forget, let's just say I drop out the group by clause and I try to do this calculation here, when I v try to view it, you're going to see you get this message and you will find, I, I see this all the time, your query does not include the specified expression vendor as part of an aggregate function. If you ever run into this error, that simply means this. Something in your select statement is not a calculation, and because it's not a calculation, it needs to be in a group by clause. So we can do table one, inventory, vendor, oops, inventory, oops, inventory, there we go. So if it doesn't, if it's not part of a calculation, then it needs to be in the group by clause or else it will cause an error. Because again, these calculations are trying to give you back a result of only one value. And if you are not grouping by this particular, you know, if you're not doing a grouping to, to make it so that you only have one unique value of vendor, then that's going to cause an error because then it's not going to know how many you know, since I'm returning one result here, but you're telling me I'm supposed to be returning multiple results here, it's going to confuse access, okay? So just make sure of that. You're either doing a calculation or it's in your group by statement, okay? I hope everybody's good with that. It, it's one of those things I see pop up all the time. It confuses people. Okay, so there's our query that gets the maximum of cost each for each particular vendor. Let's say I also want to know what's the average cost of, a, of, of the parts that I purchased from a vendor. I'm going to go back into the SQL view here, and I'm going to add another aggregate. I'm just going to do a comma. I'm going to do average, because average is a function that we can do. It's a calculation that we can do on our query. Do table one uh, inventory dot. I'm going to do it on cost each again because again I'm doing the I'm getting the average of the cost of each particular part. And then I need to again alias that. So I'm going to do as and I'm going to do average of cost each. Okay? And it's that simple. I again since it's a calculation, I do not need to add it in my group by. All right? So there we go. I'm running an average function on cost each and I'm aliasing it as average of cost each. When we go ahead and view that, there we go. So for vendor one, the maximum, the most we will ever pay, or the most that we are currently paying or have paid for a particular part has been $5.99. On average, we pay $5, and, or I should say the average cost uh, of each item is $5.49. So there you go. 
that is aggregates for you. And you can see how this would be very, very handy and useful data that now I can take the results of this query and I can return them in a report or in a form to give much more useful information to the user. In the next video, we're going to be doing some more of the aggregate functions. Uh, and we're going to go over a little bit more complex things that are going on with aggregates. And uh, I hope to see you there.